And I'm back today after several recipes that I prepared, uh, I gave, giving you a break, with the last segment on how to be healthy in body, mind, and spirit, and this one is on the spirit. The first thing is meditation. I mentioned meditation being good for the mind, but as Deepak Chopra says, it also opens the door to your spirit. We have so much noise and activity around us all the time that it's difficult to be silent. It's difficult to find any quiet, so we have to make that time for silence. One of the ways to do this is through meditation. Early morning or before you go to bed at night are two really good times. Or if you are able to do it throughout the middle of the day, then go for it. You can do a guided meditation or just sit quietly. If you've never had any experience with meditation, I would recommend that you do a guided one first just to get the feel and the gist of it. And then you can do, once you're comfortable um, with it, uh, something on your own. You must find a comfortable place. It could be outside on your lanai, in your backyard, where the sun is shining, in the shade, under a shade tree, uh, in your closet. I have a friend who goes to her closet to pray, uh, and that's actually what I do too. Uh, I have a little chapel in my house, and I am not using it as much as I thought I was going to be using it, but because it's sort of closed in, I feel too closed in in it, so I do it in my closet too. Uh, so be sure and find a comfortable place wherever that is. Usually sitting, but I guess if you uh, lie down and not go to sleep, that would be okay too, just so you're comfortable. Well, another part of being healthy in spirit is thinking. We are what we think, so be careful about what you think and what you tell yourself. You can program your life to go just about how, how you think about things. I mentioned in the other segment that about the mother who died, the mother of a friend of my daughter's because her mother died of back cancer she thought she was going to and she did she just programmed that into her mind other friends of mine who have mothers in assisted living facilities or nursing homes same thing they in conversation will say when I get there oh no 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 I'm not going there but I don't say I'm not going there I just say I'm going to remain healthy in body mind and spirit until I am ready to leave this earth so don't program that into your mind or you will get there. My mother always used to say, I can't remember anything. I can't remember anything. I can't remember anything. And I kept saying to her, Mom, stop saying that or one of these days you're not going to be able to remember anything. Well, the time came where she couldn't remember anything and still can't remember anything. So only program into your mind what you actually want to happen. Even if you don't believe it, your mind is an amazing thing. It will it will take that positive that you feed it. It will take the negative that you feed it too. But even though you don't believe it, say it anyway. The positive things you want to happen in your life. Not what you don't want to happen. I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that. Don't say don't. Program how you want to feel, what you want to do. And those are the things that are more likely to happen than the negative then. Stop the poisons. In addition to all the poisons I mentioned in the other segment about for your body, uh, it also means negative emotions, negative people, and anything that doesn't feel good to you. That affects your spirit in a huge way. Saps your energy and can bring you down if you're around negative and inappropriate behaviors, people, or even situations for any length of time. It's all around us and we can't help it, but don't spend um, lasting time around behaviors, people, or situations like that. Share and have the attitude of wanting to help others. If you see someone who needs something done, offer to do it. Someone drops something, be the first there to pick it up. Visit shut-ins or the elderly. Invite singles who might be lonely to breakfast, for coffee, for lunch, or over to your home. Shovel the snow or take your neighbor's newspaper in. Give honest compliments. Don't just say things to be saying them, but be sure there, there's always something nice you could say about someone. Be sure it's honest and that you really mean it. Work at a soup kitchen or homeless shelter, just uh, you know, among uh, a few things that you could do. Give to charity. They're just, uh, um, these are only suggestions, of course, off the top of my head, but I'm sure you can come up with many others based on people you know and in your own situation but offer your help in any way that you can. You know, just out of the goodness of your heart, not because, not for any other reason, not because you expect something back, 
uh, that would be the wrong way, reason to do something for others to share. It would be the wrong, uh, if you are expecting something, oh, I'll do this for so-and-so because maybe in the future they might be good to me. They might give me some money or they, I might need something from them. No, have that out of your mind altogether and just do it out of the goodness of your heart and because other people need it. That feeds your spirit. And just as we need to have our bodies fed, we also need to have our spirit fed. And we need to work toward feeding our spirit. It isn't just going to happen. Practice gratitude. Not only verbally, but actually do a gratitude list every day. Every day. I have a friend who says, oh, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. But do it. I mean, actually write it down on paper. When I began this practice, I was amazed at what... I was aware of what came into my life, things that I was really paying attention to being grateful for. I was able to have so much more to be grateful for when I wrote it down. And if you just think about it, you can't think of everything in the day. So I would highly, highly recommend writing it down every single day. Do it on your computer. Do it by hand. Uh, but just do it for yourself because it's an amazing practice and discipline. Oh, also, if you want to be accountable to someone else, you could be accountable to a group if you want to do gratitude, or just to one other person. You send her, your, that person a list, they will send you a list every single day. That keeps you more motivated to actually do it when you know you are having to be accountable to someone. You don't have to do it that way, but it's an, an, an idea. Pray. Praying is also just talking to the Lord. You can say your rote prayers that you've learned, or you can just talk to the Lord. Invite the Lord's light into your being, and conversely, send the Lord's light out to others. Just extend a silent blessing every time you're driving down the road or you're walking by someone or meeting people or in an airport or wherever you are. Extend a silent blessing to those people. Even if something angers or bothers you, send that person a blessing instead of anger. I'm going to relate a short story here. When I sit out on my, my lanai, I uh, hear the people playing music next door. And I loved it. I loved the music. I didn't know who the artist was or the name of the song or anything. And these are new neighbors who are renting next to us, so I didn't know them. So I went over one day and I knocked on the door and uh, an older gentleman answered the door and I said, hi, I'm Carol Fitzgerald and I live uh, next door. Where do you live? I said, I live right here next door in this house and I pointed where it was and he said, well, before you start with me, let me tell you something. Every time your lawn people, I mean, he just took me aback, but every, he said, every time your lawn people cut the hedge, they throw the debris over on my side of the fence. Well, you know, I know they don't throw it over his side of the fence. Maybe some of it falls over as they're trimming the top of the hedge, but I know they don't throw it there. But I said to him, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. I will talk to them. So I said, the reason I came, I wanted to know, I love the music that is played out on your, your and I. I hear it often. I absolutely think it's beautiful, but um, I, I don't know who it is. Can you find out the name of the artist and the name of the song for me? And he started to soften a little bit. So he said, I'll go out and ask my wife. So he went out and asked his wife and came back and he said, she doesn't know the name, but he said, she'll, she burns discs, so she'll burn a copy for you. I said, okay, thank you very much. And then before I left, he was smiling. Well, that's been two or three weeks since I asked. As I was walking away, I sent him a silent blessing. Lord, send your light to him. And um, two or three weeks have gone by. I haven't gotten the burned copy of the disc. And in addition to that, she turned down the level, so I don't even hear the music anymore that I thought was so beautiful. So I don't know, there are people like that out there. It didn't make me angry. There's something, it's his problem, it's his issue, and or hers. Um, but I often will say, Lord, you know, bless them for me. And for them too. But it helps me not to get angry over a situation like that.